Good morning, everyone. I'm Tong Zhu from Florence School of Regulation, Climate. Today, I'm here with Andrea Marku, and uh, we are going to talk about the international dimension of carbon markets. So, good morning, Andrew. Good morning, Tom. Thank you for your availability for this interview. And uh, first, I would like to invite you to talk a little bit about the international cooperation on carbon markets. What is the current status? The international cooperation of, in carbon market is now at a point where it, has, it is not moving very fast. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is that we are in between two uh, regimes. We were in the Kyoto regime, and which is still in force. Yes. But that Kyoto regime, which brought in the, the Kyoto market, it really, to some degree, frozen for a number of reasons, including the lack of demand, but also the lack of regulatory certainty. The new regime, the Paris Agreement regime, is being developed. And as such, the, those that have international compliance under the international regime are not in a position right now to really dove into the market. They are preparing themselves to, to, to enter the market mm -hmm. uh, and continue what has been a very successful in the first in the market 1.1, 1.0 during the Kyoto period, but is now, uh, now pre just a preparation stage, a stage where we, we rebuild capacity, a stage where we rebuild infrastructure and, and, uh, and hopefully going on to bigger things. Yes. So what do you think is, uh, what is the implication of uh, Paris Agreement on international cooperation between carbon markets? Paris Agreement is really provides the, uh, uh, the framework to relaunch the carbon markets. The, you know, there are different levels of compliance. The, uh, the Kyoto Protocol has provided uh, compliance for parties, for countries to, 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 to comply with uh, obligations under the protocol. Mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in the case of the Paris Agreement, there are different types of compliance. They are uh, nationally determined contributions, so part, you know, countries uh, make their own pledges and they will, uh, they will uh, comply with them. Uh, but part of the, uh, that, the Paris Agreement provides the framework for using international cooperation. International cooperation will take many forms. It comes under Article 6. Article 6 talks about general, in general, international cooperation. But then it goes into more details, into Article 6.2 and 6.4, which talks about international cooperation, which uh, uh, allows for the transfer, international transfer of mitigation outcomes of reductions. And that provides the framework for the creation of a new market. It does not create per se a new market. It provides the framework because it recognizes that under the agreement, you can use mitigation outcome producing one card country to meet your NDCs in your own country. So it's, it's that kind of framework. In that way, frankly, it's not very different from the, the Kyoto Protocol. The Kyoto Protocol also provided the framework for the creation of the market, but the market was created by parties and then private entities that had obligation, national level obligations. Mm -hmm. So you just introduced us about uh, Article 6.2, right? What about Article 6.4? Uh, Article 6.2 and 6.4, you know, people would interpret them in many, many ways. Yes. My personal interpretation is that, in essence, they do the same thing under different governance. Mm -hmm. Article 6.4 creates, it's a protocol to create emission reductions. The protocols need to be uh, developed and then transfer those emission reductions to other parties for use towards their NDCs. Mm -hmm. So, but that is under a governance, under the authority, under the, the guidance of the, the, the meeting of the, uh, the conference of the parties, you know, the meeting of the party under the Paris Agreement. Article 6.2, which is its companion article, essentially does more or less the same thing, is, except that the main governance in that article, the main deciding uh, factors are the parties that cooperate. So it is a, if you want, parties will cooperate in the way they see fit and they will exchange mitigation outcomes that are being developed at the national level with national protocols, but then they will have to be very transparent and report so everybody knows what they're doing. So, you know, on one side you've got a, a fairly, if you want, a fairly structured uh, regime which has a very clear set of rules approved by the conference of the parties. On the other side, you have uh, parties cooperating, setting the rules among themselves, but making those rules very, very transparent and, and known to everyone else. It is, uh, if you want, it is, uh, it's their options. 
and some would prefer Article 6.4 because Article 6.4 gives a lot of people the certainty and if you want the, the authority of, 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 a, of a UN structure. The other ones uh, provide you the, the, the freedom to innovate but obliges you to uh, obliges you to be very transparent and take the responsibility for your own acts. So if you're not a good person, then the world will know. So can I, it reminds me actually Article 6.4, it is similar to the clean development mechanism or? It is not dissimilar. Uh, it is initially those that have conceived Article 6.4 are very much conceiving it as a CDM plus, a, a new CDM, a renewed CDM. Yes, yes. I think uh, it's clearly that it is going to be one of the functions of Article 6.4. Some people will imagine that there are other functions for Article 6.4. I'll give you an example. Uh, so 6.4, if you imagine that it has many windows or many applications, you know, things in, in terms of your iPhone, it may have many applications. Uh, one application would be that you have a protocol like the CDM, reproduce emission reductions, then transfer them somewhere else. <coughs> if you, another way to think about it, Article 6.4 could be a, uh, a window that will um, uh, validate different other protocols like the Voluntary Carbon Standard or the JCM. The JCM, the Japanese joint uh, uh, mechanism that, uh, that they, Japan has developed with other countries, especially in Southeast Asia, essentially is a bilateral mechanism and it would qualify very easily and very nicely under 6.2. However, it may be conceivable that Japan and its partners may decide at some point, for whatever reason, that they wish to have this under the umbrella of the UN. In which case, as in many other protocols in, in the world, you may submit this for approval and acceptance under a set of rules, and the Article 6.4 may have that function as well. Possible? We don't know yet. This is still under development and it's still something that we have yet to see. But there are a number of parties and groups of parties that are proposing a number of applications for 6.4 in addition to the CDM. Thank you for today's uh, interview with me and uh, I think uh, Andrea Marco provided lots of uh, good information and this is uh, the beginning video and uh, we'll see you later for the course. Thank you very much. Thank you.